Welcome back to Bible and Blues, and we're continuing on through John. We're up to chapter eight. Chapter eight is actually a little bit different in the, in the sense that there's we 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 we've had difficulty finding early evidence, uh, you know, about the, the when this was written. Um, most of the Bible we have very early, like within fifty years of the death of Jesus. Uh, this is a little later. Uh, I don't, you know, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have a great message in it. Uh, so that we're going to continue on, um, and where Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. <clears throat> In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to cast a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this point, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first, until only Jesus was left, and the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Now go and leave your life of sin. So this is a, a common theme of Jesus when he's when he's forgiving somebody, that you know, giving them the forgiveness that uh, we so rightly do not deserve. Uh, go and sin no more. Go forth and and stop your life of sin, uh, it, which you know, is a very important uh, aspect. We are we are sinners. We sin continuously, uh, whether it be in thought or deed, uh, action or inaction. So we, we continuously sin as people. Uh, so, but the thing is, is that we need to, or we need to strive to see, to stop sinning. That is, a, that is the impossible thing to strive for. Uh, some of the things, you know, that, uh, that we see in here is, you know, the scribes and, and Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. And he says, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Let him cast the first stone. We're, we're pretty aware of this. Um, so the questions that you know, scholars have been asking for, you know, for, thousand, for, for, for 2,000 years is, what was, what was Jesus drawing on the ground? He, he, he went down to the ground and he was just drawing something on the ground. Okay, they, they make a point of saying it, which, and it's, so it's, it was significant. There was a purpose behind that. So what was he writing? You know, a lot of people have different theories. Some say uh, that he was actually writing down um, the sins of the Pharisees and the scribes. Uh, so that to point out theirs and say, okay, this is what you want. That's fine. And if we do it, we're going. To, you're going to do it, and you're. Going, you know, the world's going to know about your sins as well. Um, and so, this is uh, the, the uh, which was a way of, of stopping it from happening. Um, so the 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 question of of you know what 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 was he drawing is, is something we'll probably never know on this side of on this side okay it's not going to be until after you pass and you're in heaven with jesus that you'll be able to ask him what did you write and he'll be able to tell you uh, but until then you know we need we all we can only speculate so other th other things was that you know they all left so whatever was uh, that you know that you know that he was drawing on the ground was very significant and um they said if you he sh you know he shifted the guilt from her to them so if you were without sin then you have the right to do this the way they were trying to you know to, to get him was because they knew that if you know the law stated that she she was to be stoned that's what the law stated. But there's a couple of problems with that. Is that first off, they're under the rule of the Romans. The Romans wouldn't allow it to happen. They, they, it was not allowed for them to 
cast a st- to stone and, and, and kill this woman. So there's another aspect there of if you if you are so strong in your belief, you cast the stone and you're going to take the Romans punishment for casting that stone for being the one doing it. So do you want to do that? And they weren't willing to do it, but they were willing to have him condemn her because it would make him look really bad to condemn a woman to death. So these are some of the things that, that were happening here. Uh, so when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are true. Because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, Where is your Father? You do not know me or my Father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would also know know my Father. He spoke these words while teaching the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because of this hour had not, because his hour had not yet come. There we have that again. His hour had not yet come. Once more, Jesus said to them, "I am going away, and you will look. For, you will look for me, and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come." This made the Jews ask, "Will he kill himself? It, is that why he says, where I go, you cannot come?'" But he continued, you are far, you you are from, from below. I am from above. You are of this world and I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am he, you will indeed die in your sins. Who are you? They asked. Just, just what I have been, been telling you from the beginning. Jesus replied, I have, I have much to say in judgment of you. But he who sent me is trustworthy, and that I have heard from him, I tell you, I tell the world. They did not understand what, what he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent, sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many believed in him. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if, if you hold to my teaching, you, really, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have, the, have been, never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I, very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you that I have seen in the Father's presence. And, and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you were looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did no such things. You are not. You are doing the works of your own father. This is very accusatory, very telling when he says your own father, because he is saying your father is not God. My father is God and your father is something else. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. That, why is my language not clear to you? Because you're unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there was no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native, his native tongue, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I'm telling the truth, why don't you believe me? 
Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. That is crazy. He looks at them and he says, your father is the devil. And then he describes the devil's lies. That's really intense. Can you imagine hearing that as a Pharisee? The Jews answered him, aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and a demon possessed? I am not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. I am not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it and he is the judge. Very truly, I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. As they exclaimed, now we know you're demon possessed. Abraham died and so did the prophets. Yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar, like you. Whew, that's harsh. But I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet fifty years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham? Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself, slip, slipping away from the temple grounds. Here is the reading of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That, I'm glad I was actually just saying things in the middle of this because there is so much going on here. So much. Can you imagine? I mean, being told, you know, you know thought you were righteous and thought you were, you know, a, a, a part of you know, the, 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 you know, the children of God and being told that your father is the devil how that was that was really harsh you know and then his claims about himself you know they're, they're saying you know um, are you saying that you aren't a samaritan and demon possessed because you know the, the the relationship between the jews and the samaritans was was very conflicted they 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 they, they, they worship god very differently and it was a very important that you are one or the other and jesus Jesus said, I am not possessed by a demon, but I, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Okay. You know, he just continues to go through this and, you know, the, the, they, they tell he, and he tells them straight up before Abraham was born, I am. That is, this is one of those times where Jesus is saying he is part of the triune God, because when Moses asked about asked the burning bush, "Who are you?" You know, when they asked who who I said who I spoke to, God said, "I am." You tell them, "I am," and that's what he's saying. This, he just brought that before Abraham was born, "I am." You know, they were getting ready to stone him, but he just slipped away. His time was not yet, and so. This is really amazing if you when you put it all down there. And anyway, um, I really appreciate this one. Uh, the very first part, the, the part about uh, uh, the the stoning of you know the, the woman or where he you know, the, the, the adulteress. Uh, that's the part where you know things are not as clear as whether that's whether that's uh, the be you know early enough writings the rest of it we have early writings for, and so this so it is important to, to make sure we we note that. Um, you know, just just for accuracy's sake. Uh, but the rest of it, yeah. Um, and it starts in verse in verse twelve is the dispute over Jesus's testimony, and that's after uh, after the uh, you know the adulterous woman. Um, that part we have earlier writings for. So you know, it's, it's an important thing to, to consider. But the story behind the woman who who was uh, is is an important story as well. Anyway, I have to get going. I actually have a whole other Bible study that I'm going to be doing in person with some friends. And, uh, you know, God bless. I hope uh, I hope to see you all here again. Um, if you want to see some uh, some live time, uh, I'm kind of working some things out with some friends that uh, uh, that we may be doing something like this together. 
Uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to get something like that going. I'd like to do it live. I don't know if that'll happen, but I'm working on OBS and how to use it in big screen. I'm probably going to do a couple of test runs and see what I can get going. It'd be great. And if you'd like to see that, let me know. Uh, I haven't got anything scheduled for, for my, with my friends yet, but I'd like to do it. And I am you know think it would be fun. So thank you very much. God bless. Have a good one. Bye now.